All right, guys. Thank you all again for joining us today with the International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, it is January the 29th, about 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want to thank you all for taking your time out this afternoon on Saturday afternoon to join us. Uh, this is the first meeting of 2022, so hope everybody's had a, uh, a good little break, uh, had a chance to get some carving done, take some classes, and uh, hope that uh, you'll continue to join us on these Saturday afternoon meetings. Uh, before I get started, I'm just going to cover a few things. Um, we have uh, Bob Hershey that's going to be coming on with us today. He's going to be doing a Easter Bunny uh, demonstration for us. Uh, Bob's going to be talking a little bit about um, a class that he has coming up. Uh, if you want to go out to Wood Carving Academy and check out the uh, workshops that are available, his is out there. Uh, Bob's going to have a workshop shop starting on February the 19th on carving an Easter Bunny. Uh, again, he'll talk a little bit about that when he starts. Uh, some other workshops um, that is available to you all. Uh, Janet Cordell is going to be having a facial plane uh, class starting on February the 7th. Uh, if you're interested in that, go out and contact Janet Cordell, and uh, she'll be happy to get you signed up. And then uh, Dave Stetson that's on with us today, he has a new class that's starting on March the 12th. That's carving the uh, butterfly and bag lady and gentleman friend. Uh, and again, that starts on March the 12th. So contact Dave if you're interested in that class and he'll get you signed up for it. Um, just a couple of other things I wanted to talk about. Uh, CCA's uh, having a competition. It's the first live competition that they're having out in Colorado Springs. I've got posters up back here in the back. Uh, Bob's also going to be talking about that. Uh, that competition's on September 24th and 25th. So if you are uh, interested in participating in that, make sure you go out and check out the uh, CCA uh, website, uh, the, all the information's out there. Uh, it's gonna be similar to uh, the mailing competition that they had, uh, but they're also gonna have some, uh, some classes with about six instructors. One of those is gonna be Bob Hershey. Uh, they're gonna release a new book at that show. Uh, and again, it's in uh, Colorado on September 24th and 25th, if you're interested in that. We'll be talking more about that later on. Um, today in the meeting, we're gonna do a live auction uh, like we've done in the past. Uh, we're going to do an auction on another Helvey knife. Helvey's a big contributor uh, to our meetings. You'll see their sign up here at the top. Uh, we're going to be auctioning this knife uh, that's a Don Mertz blade knife. Hopefully you all can see that. Uh, if you're interested in bidding on that knife, uh, put that bid in the chat. Uh, all the proceeds will go to benefit International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we've recently got some new hats with our logo on the front. Uh, these are Richardson 112 hats. If anybody is familiar with, uh, with hats and, and types, uh, it's a good brand. It's a great logo. Uh, we're gonna kick that in with the auction. So not only will you win the knife, you also win one of the hats. Um, there's only about three other people that have those hats right now. We'll be uh, making those available in the near future. But if you're interested in bidding on that, go ahead and start putting uh, your bid in the chat. And we'll call that at the end and the person with the highest bid will win that. You'll just need to stay on at the end of the meeting. Uh, I'll talk about some other things at the end of the meeting. Just want to uh, thank some of our supporters. Uh, Chipping Away um, has donated gift certificates in the past uh, that we can do giveaways in our meetings. Uh, they're a big supporter of ours. Make sure you go out if you're looking for wood carving needs and check out Chipping Away. Uh, wood Carving Academy, again, uh, they offer classes. They have a subscription there. Uh, you can go in and see some of the past workshops that's been held in some of the other classes. Uh, you can sign up for a subscription for a month, three months, or a year. Uh, so make sure you check them out. Uh, and then two magazines, Wood Carving Illustrated and uh, Chip Chats. Uh, both of those are available and big supporters of ours. So make sure you go out and check them out. Uh, having said all that, I'll go ahead and turn the meeting over to Bob Hershey. Bob has uh, a lot of information to share. He's going to be doing the demonstration on an Easter bunny. Uh, Bob, thanks for joining us today from uh, from uh, Pennsylvania, and we look forward to uh, seeing what you have to share with us. Okay, am I unmuted here? You are good, Bob. Oh, okay. Wasn't sure. Okay, thanks a lot, Blake. Um, it's a real pleasure to be on here, and I appreciate all the work you guys do to uh, set these programs up. And uh, I know I always appreciated watching them myself. So hopefully I can uh, add some interest here today with what I have. Uh, I'm gonna promote a few things that I'm involved with here uh, briefly at the beginning. The Lancaster County Woodcarvers Show 
and Wildlife Art Festival is March 12th and 13th. If you are anywhere in the vicinity of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, specifically Millersville University, we would love to have you come out. Um, I will say this, masks are required as per Millersville University policy. Veterans get in free and we'll have over a hundred tables of carvers and we have about 25 tables of vendors. We have a really nice uh, group of vendors coming this year. Uh, we have our very own Don Swartz with Hillcrest Carving. Uh, Dennis and Kathy Overcash will be there. Uh, Ritter Carvers, Don Butler, the glove guy, Bob Statlander. So uh, if you're looking to spend some money and get some new tools, come out and visit us. Also, I wanted to put this on if anybody's interested. The Lancaster County Wood Carvers, the first Tuesday of every month at seven o'clock Eastern Time in the evening, we have a little Zoom get together. It originally started out as just our club, but as time passed, we got people from all over the country and Canada to join us. And so we just get together. Um, we go around, everybody gets a chance to talk if they wish. If you don't wish to talk, that's fine. And um, you can share your carving, you can ask questions. We get quite a, you'd be surprised who joins us sometimes. Uh, quite an interesting cast of characters and we have a lot of fun. So that'll be February 1st, this Tuesday night. And if anybody's interested, that's the Zoom number. You're welcome to join us at seven o'clock Eastern time. I, Blake talked about this a little earlier and I guess I'll hold it up this way. Uh, this is the, uh, actually it might work better if I was down here. Yeah, Tom uh, can change it, there you go. You can change your camera. This is the event that um, Blake was referring to. The CCA is having an event at uh, Colorado, Colorado Springs. Most of the information you would need is here. The website, go to uh, cca-caricaturecarvers-org and you can find out all you need. Um, there will be, you can see uh, mountain wood carvers will be there, healthy knives and Heineke wood will, will be vendors. There'll be classes. The classes will be um, on Saturday, uh, there'll be three instructors and on Sunday, there'll be three more. The classes will be four hours, 10 to 12 and one to three. So you won't get a lot of time with each instructor, but you'll get a little, uh, little taste of each instructor. I'm going to be doing this uh, frog chain pool is what I'm doing. And in full disclosure, I must say, this original idea was uh, our fellow CCA member, Dennis Thornton's idea. I saw it uh, at a camp we were at. I took it, changed it up, added the clothing and kind of ran with it. And uh, with his blessing, he is going to allow me to teach this. And uh, one of the reasons that I had uh, trouble coming up with a project to teach, if you, any of you know my work, I don't do a lot of one or two or three hour projects. I do a lot of projects that take uh, a week or two or a month. So uh, that's what I'm going to be teaching the frog chain pool, if anybody's interested. And Blake had referred to, I'll turn her this way, Louisa May. And she is the class that I'm gonna be doing on, um, oh man, I forget the dates. <laughs> That's pretty bad. It's in uh, three weekends from now and it's two weeks in a row, uh, 19th and 20th and 26th and 27th, I think. The best thing to do there is to go to Wood Carving Academy look under workshops and you can get all the information. If you have interest, get a hold of me. Um, you can uh, look at this on the Academy without signing up uh, and you can look under workshops and see what's available. You'll, you'll see a, a wide variety of other workshops there. Um, and also while you're there, look around. Uh, 
check out the academy uh you know in the winter like this a great time to watch some videos you would be amazed how many uh talented instructors are on there with videos um so uh, you might want to check that out where you're there while you're there um Yaron does a great job running that and uh uh, I feel the way about Iran a little bit like I feel the way that run the the, the people that run these meetings, uh, us old guys that can't barely figure out how to log on to a computer are very fortunate to have uh, people uh, like Iran and uh, Blake and Tom and Dave that run these things that know that uh, uh, the technicalities of all these complicated devices for me <laughs> anyway. So we're lucky to have these people helping us out. Uh, otherwise us old guys would be lost, I believe. So anyway, if anybody's interested in Louisa May, we're carving from a rough out and uh, you can find out all the details on the Academy and then send me an email if you're interested. We have about a week yet that you can sign up, maybe a little longer. And that's about it. So, Today we're going to carve a little bunny head, an Easter bunny head, and as I said a bit ago, I have trouble uh, with small projects, so I came up with this one specifically for this event, and hopefully we can uh, get this done in the time frame and, uh, and give you an idea how I carve a bunny head. Uh, they're all sort of the same, the face, the eyes, so we will get moving on that. And I think most of you have seen the pattern that I put out. It's pretty simple. Uh, you really uh, barely need to uh, bandsaw anything out. If you don't have a bandsaw, it's not much work to cut this out. Uh, I did wanna say one thing. I know there's always a lot of question about how to lay um, your wood out when you uh, bandsaw your uh, your rough out, not your rough outs, your blanks, your bandsaw blanks. Of course, you want the uh, the grain to run the long way, but I know there's about two different ways that people do this, but it's hard. It might be hard to see here, but the grain on this piece is is running in this direction, and so I always carve. I don't, there's certain school of thought that carves on the end. I don't like to do on the edge. I don't like to do that. If you do finish a piece naturally or real thin, you're going to have uh, those edge lines running through it. Uh, most of my work, I paint heavier. You wouldn't see it anyway. But if you carve, uh, if you lay it out this way, that the rings, the growth rings are like this. Uh, your the facets of the wood will look much nicer when you're finished, I think. Um, and I recently, I've spent a, a, a lot of time struggling to try to explain to people how to do this. Uh, and I finally, I guess I have to give credit where credit's due. Very recently, I was listening to some Stetson fellow guy. I don't know who he is, right? But he said he described it as carving from the outside of the tree in and that's the best way to explain it uh you carve from the outside of the tree in so anyway that's how i do it um and with everything i carve so okay let's get started on the bunny and uh there's just a very few thing two little things i'm going to do uh for the uh top of his uh, little bow tie, I'm gonna measure up here about three quarters of an inch. And these things are, boy, this doesn't have to be um, exact whatsoever. It can move around. And for the bottom of his nose, I'm gonna measure up about two and a quarter inches. I should get them somewhat in the center. So that would be about there. I'm using this red pencil because I think you can probably see it better. Hey, Bob, you're muted. I just got a phone call. I didn't even know it could do that when I was on a Zoom meeting. Apparently, it can happen. Okay. 
that's really all I'm going to lay out. Um, oh, one little other thing I'll show you quick, just for the shits and giggles. If you have your your rabbit knife, it's going to work better to carve your bunny. And this is a knife I made about five or six years ago from one of Helvey's blanks. He used to sell basswood uh, handles uh, and uh, blanks with just plain basswood. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, that's a really good knife. It actually, it's a good rough out knife. It works well. And it'll make your bunny carving better. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna use my my rough out knife. And first thing we'll do is knock this edge of the uh, of the uh, ear off on this side. Uh, and I'm going to shape the ears first. I pretty often start at the top of a carving and work down. Now on these ears, <clears throat> I'm going to sort of turn them out. It'll make the, make the ears wider up here at the top. So I'm going to turn them almost at a 45 degree angle to his head. And I'll narrow them down a little bit. I don't know if y'all heard that phone call coming in or not. <laughs> At least it wasn't a bill collector this time. Bob, that was probably your friend Tom telling you he's going to retire. <laughs> Breaking news. Oh, oh, that friend Tom. <laughs> Oh, my dear close personal friend, Tom, yes. <laughs> you had me running through my head all the times I knew there for a second, and then I remembered. So this isn't anything very difficult we're doing here. I'm just shaping the ear a little bit, cleaning up the... Is there a question? It's Daniel from Kitchener, or from uh, Grand Band, rather. Oh, uh, hi, Daniel. Is, what are the measurements? Two by two by? Five and a quarter tall. OK, thank you. And good to see you, bud. Nice, nice to hear your voice. I almost would have recognized that I believe without you identifying yourself, maybe. <laughs> Daniel's one of our regular visitors to our uh, monthly Zoom meetings that we have. And he hails from, y'all think it's cold where you're at. He's from up there in Ontario somewhere where it's seriously cold. I'm just gonna, I'm pretty much done blocking out that ear for now. I'm gonna come over and do this other ear. And I chose to bend the top of his ear over. Um, it just adds a degree of difficulty and a little more interest, I think. Um, I'm really not sure bunnies can bend their ears like that, but it doesn't really matter. Because on this little fellow, we can do whatever we want with his ears. We're not trying to make him look very realistic. Now, on this ear, I want to turn it out to the side over here a little. So I'm just going to kind of work his ear in that direction. So I don't want it coming out straight with that flop. I mean, you can do it straight, but it'll just be a little more interesting, a little more movement into this kind of uh, straight up piece. If you just turn that ear out a little bit. So we'll just start blocking that in.
I could have done a little better job of uh, band sawing this out. And I wouldn't have this so much to take out here. But when I band saw my uh, cutouts, I just I don't do them very close or accurate. Um, I don't know. I just leave myself a lot of extra room to uh, to carve. I'm not one that has a fancy bandsaw and bandsaws it down to the last thirty seconds of an inch and then just cleans it off. Uh, I don't mind if there's a little wood there to carve. So we'll clean this off here in the front of his ear that's flipped over. And I also on the uh, little pattern that I made had this ear a little high. So we'll just take a little off there. And there again, I would never change that pattern for myself because it just takes, you know, an extra four seconds to cut that off. And I don't mind. Hi, Bob. Yes. Yeah, where is that pattern available, please? Social media? Um, you know, I think Blake had that or Tom or one of them had that one. Uh, the, yeah, just uh, to cut in, Bob, we have it on our Facebook and our Instagram. There we go. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. And if you can't find us, send an, send an instant message to one of us and we'll send it out to you. Thanks for the question. I thought I was talking to myself there for a while. Not like I don't do that anyway when I'm carving sometimes. but So you can see I've worked underneath... Uh, his ear there a little bit it's kind of you're going against the grain uh but uh for now that's pretty much i might separate it his ear here in the center a little more open that up a little I'm just gonna add a little more twist on the ear here and if i'm adding that twist i have to come over here and take some off Hey Bob, this is yeah. this is Jim from Lancaster. Hey, don't worry about the crowd. I know that Dave Stetson's on. I'm watching you, and there's probably <laughs> eight, nine other people on here. <laughs> uh, Jim from Lancaster. Well, I sure hope I get to meet you someday. That would be very nice. I'm sure. Well, have you maybe been for at, a long time? <laughs> I have been, and I'm planning on coming to the Lancaster show. That's at Millersville University. It, and, in March. And Jim is one of our very good carvers from our Lancaster Club. And most of you have probably know Jim from when he uh, was on here demonstrating. And, and Bob, sure we have 103 can... on at this point. Oh, so I don't have any pressure here then. Well, now his head will get real big. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to start moving down the back a little, cleaning this off, rounding it up a little. Nothing. Uh... Now. It's real easy to make his ears a little longer here too, just by pushing it down a little. Okay, now what I'm gonna do on the side of his face here, if you looked at it from the side, uh, from the top of his nose pad, we want to round that off pretty, make a nice uh, round curve there. So I'm gonna kind of come across the piece here, across the grain. Try to get that profile. That look, looks pretty good for now. We'll round the rest of his head off just a little bit. 
You don't have to take too much off here. Clean off the bandsaw marks. Just start to shape the face a little bit. Get that in the other side. You don't need to take too much off of there at this point. Okay, I'm going to round the side of his head up a little more, working it down. Now I know you're all ready to get started on the bunny face, but for some reason, I don't know why, I just kind of go to the back next and lay out his little coat. And that's a real quick process. We can take a little more off to round him up as we're coming down to the bottom here. We don't want him square. Oh, I'm going to jump front here. Before I do the collar, I'm going to come front and just roughly lay out his uh, bow tie. So from that point, three quarters of an inch up, right in the center. I'm going to use, this is a uh, number 12, a 60 degree V tool. You can use whatever you wish, of course. You know, a lot of people get hung up on uh, what the instructor's using and what knife he has and all this and that. To some uh, degree, you do have to have uh, good tools, proper tools, but uh, a lot of tools can get the same job done. So that just starts us on the, uh, looks a little high. Yep, yeah, that's right, three quarters. Now on the side of the uh, bow tie, well, another thing I'm gonna do right now while I'm at this is I'm gonna push the bow tie back a little further. I know we're jumping around here, but I wanted to set this bow tie in so I can bring the back of his, his collar down around to the back of the bow tie. So there you can see the profile, how we push the bow tie back a little further. <clears throat> I'm gonna use this same uh, 60 degree V tool. Oh, I'm not sure what that would be. I'd guess a quarter inch. Yeah, about a quarter inch from the back front of the uh, the bow, bow tie. We'll just set a line in there on each side. We'll bring our collar down to that. Okay, I don't have a real spot here. I just start up in here. I'm gonna use, this is a Drake. It's like a U gouge, almost a number 11, about five eighth inch. I'm gonna start up about here to set that collar in. And I'll measure that for you. The center of that cut is about, yeah, a little over an inch and a half up from the bottom. It really doesn't matter. Uh, then we can move it up or down. Now, I guess I should have drawn the line there for you to see. I'm gonna take the collar right like that on both sides. I'm going to come in behind that bow tie so I can work with the grain of the wood a little bit here. Get a corner on the other side. We 
guess I should just show you this briefly so you can see what we're going for here. Clean that little red pencil mark off. Okay, now I'll come back with the uh, 60 degree number 12 V tool again. And I'm just gonna set a line and these lines can be moved after, even after we have them in. Uh, I'm gonna set a line at the top of the collar. And we'll set a line at the bottom of the collar. Switch here so we can work with the grain a little better. Now I'm going to use my rough out knife again, and I'm just going to bring the head down into the collar for kind of a smooth that transition out. The way I have it now. It's pretty rough. I might not do a lot of work back here today, but we'll, uh, I'm going to just round the back of his head off a little bit. tool and clean that up a little. Okay, I'm gonna turn my V tool on the side and I do this a lot. I carve with V tools and I use uh, one side or the other. You don't always just ram that V tool straight in the wood. Matter of fact you really never do but uh, here I'm really just using the point and the uh, the left wing. Should round smooth this off a little more. This is pretty easy and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time getting it perfect today, unless we have time later. I actually, uh, and I should show this, uh, I use a 16.3 VTOOL a lot, and it's, uh, it's a uh, 35 degree, uh, and it really uh, creates nice shadows. So if I was finishing this off or when I would be finishing this off, I'll come in here and add a real nice shadow. See, you can see the difference in the shadow there to over here. Not quite sure I'd be ready to do this, but I just wanted to show you that. And I would do that on the top and the bottom. And you can see with this uh, big U gouge I used, we got a nice shape, nicely shaped collar there. It's not flat, it makes it a little more interesting. You can also see I chipped some off there. That's not too big a deal. Just come back in, push the collar in a little, clean that up. So we finished the back of the bunny, pretty much. There's some tweaking to do. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but I wanna kind of finish up here 
so we don't have to come back to this collar again. Another thing I would do where the collar goes in behind the bow tie, I would use my uh, detail knife, put a stop cut, and just take two cuts out of there. And that will help to push that underneath so that it looks like the collar is going back behind his bow tie as opposed to on this side where the collar just kind of hits the bow tie and stops. Uh, it's just another place of creating a shadow and more interest. A lot about what we're doing is creating shadows. So that's about, uh, that's about it for back there. So, uh, We're gonna move ahead to the front, his head here. I'm gonna finish cleaning off the side of his head a little. Get rid of some of that bandsaw marks. Okay, now on this bunny, Clean the house here a little bit. On this bunny, uh, his whole eye channel and all is going to come right off the point of his nose pad here. I wouldn't generally draw this in, but I will. Uh, this is sort of his nose pad here. And we want to create his, the eye channel. Uh, I like to put my bunny's eyes on the side. Uh, I know if you're doing a caricature bunny, uh, a lot of people put them looking forward. That looks a little more cartoony and that's all right. There's nothing at all wrong with that. I just, just how I do it, I put them on the side, but I do like to, I angle them a little bit um, as you can see on this one. So if you're looking directly in front of it, you can see the eyes a little bit. It's kind of like a bunny's eyes are. You know, sometimes I caricaturize or cartoon things and sometimes I make them more realistic. So I'm going to use this uh, 5 8 inch gouge and we're gonna start right off uh, the edge of that nose pad and run deep several cuts it'll take me and we're gonna run it right back almost to the center of his ear. And we really have to get this deep. So a good sharp tool will be helpful. As it always is, of course. I'm gonna kind of lay the tool over on the left side and take a little more off there. Hope you can see what we're doing here. Now we'll do the same on the other side. It always helps when you're pushing these uh, these uh, gouges, these veiners, number 11s or whatever, into the into the wood. If you use a twisting motion, it's just like a knife. You don't just push it into the wood; you slice with it. Well, if you slice with these gouges, they'll cut much better, also. Yeah, I want to take a little more off in the front here. I have to take a side deeper. And I'm trying to keep things pretty symmetrical. Uh, I usually do, unless there's a reason for it to be asymmetrical. You know, he's got his, he's winking or he's got a hat. Uh, a frown or a smile twisted up or something. Uh, but generally speaking, I keep things pretty symmetrical, at least to my eyes, which uh, I'm not sure how straight I can see anyway. So, <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna use this 3 8 inch gouge. And what I really need to do is get this area here deeper. I don't want to take a lot off anywhere else, but just get that deeper. To 
create a bigger eye socket. We want to put pretty nice size eyes on him. Don't want little beady eyes. Rabbits have pretty nice big eyes, and uh, if you, that, that makes them look better, I think, if you keep big eye, keep his eyes pretty big and bright. So I'm going to draw these lines in the eyes and see if I have that deep enough with this red pencil. It will tell me, no, I don't have this deep enough because my eye's not going to be big enough. So I want to go deeper. I'm going to scoop more out there. And when I do that, I'll come in with this bigger gouge and take a little more off his cheek. Let's see what I can do now for an eye size. Yep, that suits me better. Slightly better. <clears throat> so we got a nice big eye there. Now I just have to make sure I do the same on the other side. With this 3 8 inch gouge, I'll push that eye socket down. I'm going to use the side of this bigger gouge to take a little off his cheek here. Okay, now I, this is real technical. I just kind of hold my finger here for a measuring device and that's the front of his eye. I'll go across here. Well, that should be the front of his eye there. And this is the back of his eye. That should be the back of his eye. And I kind of make these sort of almond shaped, I guess you'd say, not quite, but I add a little twist on them. Now, if I look at that from the front, right here on this side, it's a little heavy in the front of his eye. So I'm gonna use my 3 8 inch gouge and take a little more out. There we go. Now with, uh, with my detail knife, I'm gonna put a stop cut in, nice deep stop cut. And I'll angle that off to the side. I'm gonna do the same here. These little bunny, oh, I slipped off. These little bunny eyes aren't anything, uh, they're not very difficult. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see what I'm doing, but I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, now we're just going to come in and peel that out where we put the stop cut. The eye will be pretty much flat. Um, we can round that off a little. Now the front and the back, we'll take a three quarter, three point chip out of to round it off a little bit. Also in the front of the eye, in this fur area, I like to take a little three corner chip out. We'll do the same on this side. We'll take a three corner chip. Three corner chip and a little chip out the front. Now, 
uh, because I used this red uh, red pencil, I'm going to clean that off a little. Okay, I want to. I'm going to use my detail knife, smooth that forehead off, just to give it a little smooth transition. I'm also going to use this number, uh, it's an 11.5, and I'm going to follow the shape of the eye and kind of create a little mound there. which will help create his eye mound area. If you can see that shadow I did there, and we'll do the same on the bottom. Looks a little heavy there, take some off, there we go. And I'll do the same in the other side. For some reason on this side, I seem to have trouble getting it too thin on the top. And then we'll do that on the bottom. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do to the eye, and I didn't take a lot of time to smooth this off as much as I could have maybe. But I will just tell you uh, this, it, it's just a little quirk of mine that I do with my eyes. I burnish the eye. And what that does is it compresses the fibers of the wood over the eye. It starts to create a sheen. Uh, I've, had, I've had people uh, look at my eyeballs that I've painted and accuse me of adding a gloss to them. It's really not that shiny, but by burnishing the eye, uh, you can start to create a sheen and get a little bit of an, uh, uh, a gloss going. And the other thing it does, when I paint these eyes, as you can see, they're pretty detailed. And I use a really fine brush. And those little fibers on that brush or hairs on that brush want to go where they want to go if you're painting on the facets of the wood. But if I burnish this, that brush is going to go where I want it to go. And I can control it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pry real hard. In this case, I'm gonna use a little number five, uh, small gouge. You can use the back of a dockyard tool, a heavy knife, anything. And I am really gonna put pressure down on that. I'm going to go across the whole thing. When I'm done with this and I, I'll burn the fur and everything, I will, uh, I'll, I'll uh, wash this, a, a real quick wash before I paint it. And this burnish, this will not lift. <clears throat> it will still stay there. So I don't know if you can see it on the camera here. <clears throat> But that eyeball is starting to get, get a little gloss, a little sheen to it. And we'll do the same on the other. It really makes painting the eye so much easier because I can control that brush. And here again, I might not have cleaned the eyes off as good as I generally would in the interest of speed here today, but uh, they're still good enough uh, to paint on and to go ahead. So that's pretty much what I do to the eyes. <clears throat> now we'll move down his face and I'm gonna clean that nose pad off because I really didn't want that red on there. We will uh, separate out his nose here with the 60 degree V tool. Uh, 
Okay, now uh, on the pattern, it has a little bit, uh, it's angled from the tip of his nose down to the, his chin, it's angled in a little bit. We wanna, I probably didn't cut that out as much as I could have. So I'm going to take a little more off here, off the profile. Push his chin and his teeth and everything in a little deeper. I suppose if you bandsaw it out a little better than I do, you would have that taken care of. Might be a good reason to do uh, a more accurate work with your bandsaw, but. So if you can see that profile, I have uh, pushed it where his teeth are gonna be. I pushed that in pretty good. Now, and I'll draw this also with a red pencil so you can see it. That little left line that separates his muzzles, the muzzles uh, on his uh, face here. Uh, I'll lay that in. I'll just draw this line a while. Okay, with the V-tool, I'm gonna separate this out and just start. I'm not gonna go very far, but I'm just gonna start the bottom of that muzzle there. Okay, now with the, the 3 8 inch gouge here, I'm gonna follow this line around to really try to create this muzzle area here. So. And you gotta watch the grain of the wood a little bit here. Now on the side, I have, I'm back even with the, uh, with the front of his eye. And as I come up towards his eye, the back of this, I, I wanna turn it and go towards the nose. So you can see that I almost made a half moon shape there. I can use the left side of my gouge here and take a little off of the his face here that we're not going to need. I can clean that up a little better. Same on the other side. I just sort of follow that red line. Here again, we have our gouge is directly below his, the front of his eye. And then as we bring it around, we have to turn it towards his nose pad. And here again, I can use the right side and clean off a little here. I didn't get this deep enough. So we'll come back and make it deeper. Now you can see I have this side and this side a little different. This is a little higher, that's lower. So we'll have to kind of balance that out. I would prefer I didn't get this side as low as I did, but since I already took that wood off, we'll have to bring the other one up to meet it, which is not a problem. Just to keep things pretty balanced. And I might take my little detail knife here, clean that up a little bit. Also, well, while I have this detail knife in my hand, I'm gonna get rid of the, uh, the red pencil there.
used my uh, V tool to set the nose lines in a little stronger. Now we could uh, actually create a little nostril area here. I'll just kind of do a half moon, uh, sort of an arc shape with my detail knife. Come back in, chip that out. You can see it just creates a little shadow there. And when I'm painting that, I'll put raw umber in there to even accent that shadow more. The other side will do the same thing. This is sort of my standard bunny face. Okay, uh, right now I can see it's a little heavy and sharp along the side here. So I'll uh, take a little off of there on each side. And this is something that you can uh, play with and tweak for a while. I'm trying to move along here best I can. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, we need to create a nice flat area here for his teeth. I'm gonna come in with my V tool, set that line again. We had before. Now, when we do his teeth, I like to have pretty big teeth on him, wide teeth. And it seems like almost no matter how wide you start these, they're not gonna to be too big. Uh, a lot of these features like eyes, teeth, a lot of things that uh, you start them out large and they still seem to get small on you. And uh, so I start these out pretty wide. You know, obviously we can make them smaller if they're too big, but they generally aren't. And, uh, and see, I thought I was drawing them in really wide and they're definitely not. I create a little wedge shape here to them. I don't bring them straight down. Now I'm gonna use my handy 16.3 V tool. Just separate that out, separate the other side out, come across the bottom. I might even use my bigger tool so that I can uh, clean that out. Now to help really create a smile here, on each side, I'm gonna uh, take out a real deep three corner cut and you can sink your knife in there as deep as you want. Uh, to create a nice stop cut because um, just because you can. So there you can see I'm pushing his teeth in, getting me behind his teeth there and that'll uh, we'll be able to get a nice smile on him. I'll do the same on the other side. It's just fun to push your knife in there so deep because uh, it doesn't matter how deep that stop cut's put in, it's not gonna hurt. Same thing. Take another chip out there. We're getting a smile going. Now, next thing I wanna do is take uh, my little 35 uh, degree V tool, the 16.3 again. I'm gonna come under the muzzle and just create a little depth there. Create a little more shadow there. It'll make his smile stand out a little more. That side the smile should look a little better than this side. Might not because you can't, probably can't see so well on this setup I got. But there you can see how we create a little shadow there. Um, now I obviously got to clean the red off of here. And we'll separate his teeth with the uh, 16.3 again, just not going very deep there. We don't want that to be too deep. Okay, now on the side of his face, it's pretty straight and flat. So we want to take some off of each side. Push that back. So 
creates more of a smile. There's plenty of tweaking to be done to this piece as I'm moving along pretty fast. For me, I'm not the fastest carver in the world. Here I still have some uh, bandsaw marks. I'm gonna get them out of there. Okay, now I'm gonna push his chin in a little further. this uh, 60 degree V tool. And I'm also, we're gonna bring his, the side of his mouth here. We're gonna bring that in with kind of a scooping action there. See how that, that side should look much more interesting and a better smile than this side. Well, at least to me it does. So you all just agree with me. Even if you think I'm wrong, just agree. It's like being married, Bob. I agree with you, <laughs> I, I agree with you Bob. <laughs> Good, thanks, Jim. <laughs> hey, just wanna let you know, Nobody said anything, but we're all fascinated. I'm sure you are. <laughs> we're watching you. You're doing a good job. Cam I want you all camera to, set up good. I want you all to agree with me, but you don't have to say yes, dear. <laughs> Gloria laughed at that. She did. <laughs> she, that, wasn't, she wasn't supposed to hear that. Okay, now with... Uh, this uh, 60 degree V tool, and I'm using the right side, the right wing, if, uh, no, I'm wrong, the left wing. I'm cleaning out underneath his teeth here. I'm gonna take a little off the side, and that'll help create that mouth area when I decide to paint it. Probably take more off here. More off here. That's basically it. Now we're gonna uh, do the, uh, I would tweak this face uh, a little bit, uh, balance it out. Like for example, here, it's a little heavy. Uh, as I turn it and look at it, I can see there's areas that don't quite suit me. And uh, that's quite all right. You just tweak it. So we'll do the bow tie here real quick. And uh, first thing on the bow tie, I'm gonna use my rough out knife and I'm gonna take a big swipe off the bottom of that. So that, uh, let's see if we can show this. When this is setting on something, well, that's not a very good picture. Anyway, it will create a shadow there. We don't want it to be just flat. Uh, we don't want that bottom to be just flat. So we'll draw the little kind of a knot area, I guess you call it. And here again, no matter how big I start this knot area, it seems to get small on me. Uh, a lot of features just seem to do that. You got to start them out really big. And, and of course, the obvious thing is if, if it's too big, you can easily make it smaller. But I think you'll find as you carve and you put features, different things, eyes, ears, whatever, on your carvings, you'll find that uh, you're not very often gonna have to make it smaller. Um, and I, whoops, darn bunny's trying to jump away from me. I also like to put things on, uh, this is not so much on this piece, but uh, I like to make them large enough features that it looks like it's there on purpose and not by mistake. Um, okay, we got the knot area in there. I uh, will use this uh, little number seven 
gouge. And I'm not really taking anything off of the edge. <coughs> Excuse me. Y'all didn't have to duck or wear your mask while I coughed there because we're all safer. Okay, you can see how I uh, pushed that bow tie in a little. Now, you can do a lot with this bow tie. I'm going to round the edge a little bit. Uh, not going to go crazy on this. Uh, but there is a few things I, there are a few things I like to do. When you look at this straight head on, I don't like this straight edge here. It should have some kind of a, a ruffle. So I'm just going to use a couple of, I'm not sure if ruffles is the even word I'm looking for. It should, the edge should be broken up in some shape, manner, or form and look random. So that's sort of what I'm going for. Just anything but flat and straight. Okay, now, and here again, like I said, you, you can do a lot with these guys, with these little ties. You probably all know how to make them better than I do, but I'm gonna use my 3 8 inch gouge and I'm gonna make preferably three cuts into that tie, into the bow as if it's tucked in. If you can only get two, that's all right. Three makes it better. And I might come back. It's not very critical, but if you really want to, you could come back with uh, like your, uh, your small V tool and just right at the, uh, right, just not the whole way, but just before it goes into the uh, knot area. Just Bob, is that a clip-on bow tie or a tie? Uh, it, it's a clip-on. So you can clip it off and put different ties on it. We're not gonna have time to go into how we do that today. But, uh, okay. I did hollow out the ears. So we'll go back and real quickly do that. I think that's the basic bunny, bunny head. Uh, you know, I can definitely, I would work on the, the, this corner is blocky and it doesn't tuck into his collar the way I would like it to. Uh, you know, I would come back and uh, having gone across this rather rapidly, I would uh, touch a few things up. Not much, so I really win. There's not a lot. Like his cheeks a little heavy here, as opposed to the other side. Those kind of things. Actually, to be honest with you, as I look at this, I would even set this shadow in behind his teeth deeper than what I had it. I'm gonna come back in and do that. It's just to create more shadow. Okay, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these ears, but we'll just clean them out a little. It's pretty uh, self-explanatory. You do have to watch about them chipping out here because you're. I'm going against the grain here. That's kind of... Uh, a little touchy, but uh, that's really all I do in this year. Clean that up a little more. He's looking good, Bob. Did you say I was looking good? Well, thank you. Oh, I guess you didn't mean that. <laughs> I opened myself up there. That's too easy, guys and girls. Don't jump on that one. That's way too easy. 
Okay, this uh, other ear here can get me a little tricky. Uh, I didn't push that in as deep as I should have. But I should be able to get, I'm gonna try this number five gouge. Oh, that's not gonna be big enough. I'm gonna jump over to, uh, I have a number nine five here. That still isn't gonna be big enough, but that's what we're gonna start with. It's really hard to get in here and scoop this out. You gotta kind of hold it off to the side. Uh, sometimes it's just as easy to go in and you are going against the grain, so you gotta be careful. Sometimes it's just as easy to take a knife in there and start working it out. This is probably the hardest part of the whole carving, to be honest with you. So why is that ear bent over? Uh, just because I wanted to. I have no real reason for that. And like I said early on, I don't think a rabbit's ear can bend like that. Uh, I just think it looks interesting, cute. Uh, if you think it looks stupid, uh, that's fine. Then make two ears like this. Uh, I just think on the finished piece, it adds some interest. That's, you know. Don't ask complicated questions like that. I have no real good reason. It's just, I bent it over like that because I could. Yes, dear. <laughs> okay. That was an L and I hope. Okay, I'm going to go and I'm going against the grain and I'm going to tr take off a little underneath where that ear is bent over. Use a nice twisting motion with your tool. Have a nice sharp tool. As you always should. And I'm, I'm holding the back of this with my finger supporting it some because this is an area that if you get a little crazy here, it could, could break off. And uh, it's probably very hard to see that area. Now this is another area when I'm burning, I can take a, like a writing tip burner in there and clean that out even more but I got it cleaned out pretty good. Okay. I'll just do a little housekeeping here. I see where somehow or other the time is flying by here. For me anyway, it's probably dragging on and on for you people trying to watch and stay awake. Okay, uh, we got our bunny done. But and Bob? Yes. But it seems like you got to be careful when you do that kind of a carving, or you could just end up splitting hairs. <laughs> Did you wait for an hour for that one, Jim? I think splitting hairs is Dave's job. It, it's all in the timing, you know? <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> Okay, I don't have much time to go into this and it might be just as well because I'd really bore you all to death, but I'll just talk for a couple minutes. You got this thing all carved, you got it tweaked, tweaked uh, you're ready to go. Now, there's two ways you can finish this. You can just paint it like I did on this one. It has a more of a traditional look. I consider it more of a folk art look. There's nothing at all wrong with this. It is just fine. Um, and if that's how you want to do it, paint it with your acrylics. I painted this with oils because that's all I really have. Uh, that's, that's fine. 
if you decide you want to try, uh, I'm sure a lot of you have wood burning tools. You spent a whole lot of money and you bought them and you probably don't get to use them much. So here's an opportunity on a little project that you could try to burn some fur. And I like to burn the fur. It's just, uh, it's sort of my signature look, a detail I do. Um, and it, when I, I did this one, you can see I burned half of it. And on the other half, I drew lines uh, to indicate the flow of the hair. Uh, now you don't just follow these lines. In this particular case, I'm making little stab cuts, little stabs with the burning tool. Uh, I know a lot of people are gonna say, how hot do you burn? This, that's the most common question I get. This burning is not delicate burning on bird feathers, or you're not making a pretty flower and a fence and a scene and whatnot like people do. We're really burning here and burning heavy. And if I'm burning fast, I get rolling here pretty good sometimes. I have it turned up to nine or 10. The tip is red hot. And uh, if you're not as experienced at burning, when you first start, you're going to want to burn slower. You won't have it turned up as high, but you want it, when you hit the wood, you want it to burn and burn into the wood, not just on top of the wood. Uh, we're putting fur in the wood. And you can see, uh, I even, well, maybe you can't. After I have all of it burned in, I turn it up as high as I can. And I put a couple extra twists and turns and try to accent some of the tufts of hair a little bit. Um, I will say this, if you decide to burn fur, uh, this on a piece like this, this is gonna take me the better part of an hour. And if you're not experienced with it, it's gonna take you a lot longer than that till you get used to it and get familiar with it. I will just say this, if you don't want to burn and burn it that heavy, and you're not gonna go all in, I much prefer to see you paint it like this and done with it. And, and that'll be perfectly fine because uh, I've seen a lot of people do hair on projects or fur, if you will. And they do it about halfway or they just have a few burn lines here and there. And when they go to paint it, it just looks, it, it looks I don't like it. <laughs> so if you're gonna do it, go all in, take the commitment, put the time in to do it. And uh, if that's not your cup of tea, that's fine and dandy. Just, you know, don't do it. I got no problem with you not doing it. Um, Bob, so, Bob, what, Bob, what kind of tip do you use? Okay. M about 95% of my car are burning. I use an Optima Fix tip number 12, and it's actually a P, if you can see it, it's a PH12 dash small rounded skew. The brand is Optima, O P T I M A. Uh, I bought these uh, originally out of Dayton at the show. There was a lady there selling them. I do know that, uh, I guess I can say this Bob Statlander carving sells them. And I'm sure there's a, a whole lot of uh, other people that sell them. Uh, the reason I use these, and I'll just tell you straight up, some people don't like to hear this, but it's truth. I used other brands and I get these very hot. And when I'm burning, I'm rolling it all the time. You don't put a death grip on the, on the tool. You're rolling it, you're turning it, you're twisting it. And sometimes I burn red hot and I turn and twist heavy. Most of the other brands that I've tried, if you get them that hot and turn and twist them, will you do that one time? I could get out my old box here and show you what they look like. You end up with a twisted tip. These Optima, for whatever reason, I don't understand. I don't know if he, he treats them. I don't know what the deal is. I don't, all I know is they work and I can get this thing red hot and turn it and twist it and sink it deep into the wood and turn it and twist it and it'll come out and it holds its edge. It holds its integrity. It's still the same tool. So that's why I use this tool. I didn't get paid for that ad, but uh, it just, they work for me. Something else might work for you, but, uh, and, and then here again, if you have other tips, 
uh, use them. You know, you don't have to run out and buy this tip. Use them. Just be very gentle with them is all I would say. Um, did that answer the question? Yeah, thanks for sharing that. When when you are actually doing the burning and, and uh, jabbing it in there and pulling it, do you go various steps just randomly or just... <laughs> I'll tell you what, if we have about two minutes here, I can show you exactly how I do it. This will only take a minute. That'd be great. I think. Bob, while you're looking Sorry. around, is that the same brand that your friend Tom uses? <laughs> that's what Tom uses. When him and I, when him and I carve together, that's what he uses. That's correct. <laughs> I wasn't quite set up to do this. I'll try to. Uh, usually, I have a fan drawn the. Uh, Throwing the uh, um, the smoke away from me, but I don't have a fan set up right now. But I'll do a little quick burning, uh, and I'll just say you don't want you don't want parallel lines. This burner is too hard for me to understand. It has two different switches on it, so okay. See, I got to slow the burn, the burning heat down because I'm going to talk and burn slow. I'm going to follow that general flow with little jab cuts. And if you can see, I'm turning and twisting. I'm not, not because I drew that line and I'm not following it with a big long line like that. Now I can break that up that you won't see that that's in there. But uh, it, some, some of my rabbits, the larger ones, I use a different technique in the burning and I use more of a long flowing motion to make a whimsical look to the fur. But uh, on these, I'm doing more, uh, it's, this is a little more like the realistic uh, uh, animal carvers uh, do. And I do recommend having a fan to draw the smoke away because I'm getting a lot of smoke here. I'm not sure you can even see the smoke. So on that one that you burned and painted, did yes. you burn, burn that heavy before you painted it? Yes, it looked exactly like this before I painted it. This bunny right here, Louisa May, I better turn the power off or I'm gonna burn my finger here. Louisa May, now she doesn't have a lot of fur, but around her head and uh, around her, well, I didn't burn her tail, but uh, here in her hands or her, her uh, hind quarter here, that was all that color solid black. Wow. Um, now I do go, after I'm done here, I will go and I'm, I'll wash this whole piece, uh, whether I burn it or not, I wash it with uh, simple green, a quick wash, brush off, pat it dry, let it dry overnight, and then I paint right on the wood. But uh, this, that you're still seeing on this piece here with Louisa May, you're still seeing some of the burn underneath there. Uh, and I use that as a shadow. Uh, if I had another bunny, and I, I do actually, uh, this bunny here, you can see, now I used more whimsical fur lines on this, a little different technique than what I was just showing you. But here you can see, I use the, depth the black depth uh some of that you still see through and that helps to create the shadow uh but i just paint this is a lot of washes on top of it but uh yeah i just i paint right on top of this um and i don't paint heavy uh i, I paint very light with light stains of oil i will come back over a piece like this uh, for example this piece here I might come back over this three or four times with different colors and different shades and uh, till, I, till it gets what suits me. 
and this one actually doesn't suit me very well. But but that one was that one was burnt that heavy before you painted it. Yes, it it yeah. looked exactly looked exactly like that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And I see we're getting about the end of time here. Probably I'm probably wearing out my welcome soon. Uh, does anybody have any other questions at all? Uh, if I don't know and an have an answer, I'll make one up. Or if I don't have the answer, somebody on here will. Uh, yes, thank, thanks so much for demonstrating that. Really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. I would, uh, well, you got the idea of the burning anyway. Nice, nice job, Bob. Thank uh, you. Bob? Bob? Yes. Now, this is Alfred. Uh, can you use acrylics that way or, or primarily the uh, oil? No, you can use acrylics. The okay. only thing is with acrylics, uh, I'll just say this. People talk about watering down their acrylics and thinning them down. Uh, most of the people I see painting with acrylics do a better job talking about that than actually doing it. So if you're not going to, you need to really, really thin your acrylics down to wash over this. Don't think you're going to put one coat on and cover it all up because uh, you'll cover everything. Um, think in terms of really thin washes. And if you have to come back and put several on <clears throat> to get the color you're looking for, that that's fine. But uh, you really, if you're using acrylics, they really need to be thinned down. You know, the, um, I don't know a lot about this, so I shouldn't even say it, but the bird carvers, they burn their feathers and whatnot, mm -hmm. and not nearly as heavy as this. And they use acrylics and they'll use, I think upwards to 20, maybe more washes till they get their color. Now I'm not telling you you're gonna have to use 20 washes of acrylic, but you're gonna have to use more than one or two. Uh, so uh, anyway, yeah, acrylics will work just very lightly. Thank you, Bob. No problem. All right, Bob, well, we're at uh, um, 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. I just want to hop on here and say thank you for coming on and uh, doing the demonstration today. I think it's very beneficial. Uh, again, make sure everybody checks out uh, the classes that are offered through the CCA that's going to be coming up in September. Uh, Bob's going to be on there. Jim Heiser, who's uh, going to be presenting with us next week, Jim's going to be uh, teaching out there as well. Uh, so make sure you check out those opportunities. And again, Bob has that class that's starting up on February 19th. And if he's using a rough out, you probably need to contact him so you can go ahead and get the rough out lined up. Uh, so reach out to Bob if you're interested in that. Uh, thanks again, Bob, for coming on with us today. We really appreciate it. Um, just want to go through the list of presenters that we've got coming up with the International Association of Woodcarvers. We've got a, a great uh, lineup coming up. Again, Jim Heiser is going to be next week on February the 5th. Uh, Tom Wilkinson, who's on today, uh, he's going to be on on February the the 12th. Uh, Kevin Applegate's going to come back with us. He's going to be on February the 19th. Uh, Dave Francis, February 26th. Rich Snyder on March the 5th. Uh, Roger Bean on March the 12th. Ray Meyer, who's on today, uh, March the 19th. Uh, Steve Tomaszek's going to be on on April the 2nd. Uh, Joe Yu is going to be on on April the 9th. And Chris Hammock's coming on with some other CCA members on April the 16th. Uh, Chris is going to be doing a sharpening demo and then talking about uh, that CCA meeting that's coming up as well. Uh, so we have quite the lineup. Uh, I want to thank uh, Tom and Dave um, for all the work that they put in and making this, uh, this meeting a, a reality and making sure that everything goes off without a hitch. I know we had a little bit of uh, a technical difficulty there at the beginning, uh, letting everybody in, but we ended up with 117 people in this meeting today. Uh, that's quite a good... Uh, uh, show up of, of people that's uh, that's come out and supported this group. Um, that's pretty good for our first meeting for the year. So just want to invite everybody to come back every Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Again, a reminder that this video will be out on YouTube later. Make sure you go out and like and subscribe us on there. All of our past meetings are out there on YouTube. 
Uh, there's about, um, I don't know, 75, 76 meetings out there so far. Uh, so if you've missed some in the past, check those out. And uh, again, this meeting will be out there. So uh, check it out. Bob, again, thank you for coming on. Thank you all for joining us today with the International Association of Woodcarvers, where carvers are helping carvers. Thank you all.